Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy morning. It's a little rainy outside, so it's kind of cool. It's a nice respite from all this hot, hot weather. And it's still going to be hot today, but that's okay. So anyways, yeah, interesting testimony from John Oakes that um, he's not healed and sealed yet. He knows that, which, okay, that's fine. Um, but he is seeing much more... I would say, I mean, cl mental clarity, yes, but he's not responding to the decay in the world like he used to. It just not, it's not affecting him like it used to. Because right now what we're seeing in the media, like that police officer that killed that poor guy and, you know, all the regular political stuff and everything it's still the same thing over and over again. I mean, we've seen this situation that happened in Minnesota or Minneapolis happen so many times through so many parts in history. And it's going to keep happening because humans, when they're on that loop of life, death, and reproduction, they will keep looping in the same type of subjectivity yet again. And so when you are working in a subjective type of world that hasn't really gotten off that wheel of revolutions, you're going to see the same things happen over and over again. And it's like, and then every new generation thinks they've reinvented the wheel. And so I did write something in my next book, not the one coming up, but the next, next, next book. I've written some stuff about that that situation in Minneapolis because subjective punishment rarely fits the crime and either the, the, the punishment is so excessive that it's beyond all comprehension or it is so like hardly even there and you're like what the hell this person did this to this person and they only have like two months in jail and this person who killed this this and this person they you know um, they uh, are not killed I'm sorry this person, uh, I don't know, stole something or they, they killed their pimp and they're getting like 50 years. And you're like, well, how is that justice? How is that? And that that does happen. Yes, I'm not going to lie. That does happen. Um, and so, but the thing is, is that the system, the justice system is more fair than not. But if you are going to do the crime, you better be able to afford it. If you can't afford to get a good lawyer or can't afford to, uh, if you can't afford to respond to the responses, if you can't afford to take on the responses to whatever said crime you did, then this is where people have to learn how to live the straight and narrow. And then, yeah, then all the different factors come into play. And that is your upbringing, your socioeconomic status, your belief systems, I mean, this is where it gets very complicated. And so, and so this is not, so you, so you understand where all this is coming from is that we have people in law enforcement as well as in the population. Good morning, Walter. Um, of course, you know, it was not proper. We know that Walter, but we have people in law enforcement and in the population that are very, very subjective. Okay. Um, there are a few things, there are very rare times that some innocent person gets thrown in jail because they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. And that does happen where there is a, 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 a case of mistaken identity and someone is framed or, you know, whatever. But that really, I mean, if you're framed by someone, really, who are you hanging out with that is committing crimes that are using you as a as a, um, as, as, as a, a suspect or someone that they could frame. Okay. So you almost have to look at who you associate with because rarely anyone that really gets into trouble with the justice system or with the police hasn't had something in their immediate circle that couldn't offer that situation. Like you have to really know your inner circle. And if your inner circle is seedy, if you are an observer in an inner circle that is, that is shady that does illegal stuff, you're going to eventually get pulled in. So you have to really look at, first of all, what is your background? What is your, who, who are your, your, your people? Who do you hang out with? And, and then, 
And then if you do get caught up into something, even though, hey, you were innocent, you still have some motor responsibility. And that's like, damn. I mean, because I'm telling you, I, I, you know, I mean, I brought a lot of my crap onto myself because I said some things and, and put stuff on the internet and advertise stuff that I couldn't do relative to what was legal and illegal, you know, as far as cures. And I'm, I'm agility is not a cure, but I didn't know the advertising laws. So I, you know, at some point did break some of the laws, but it was inadvertent and it wasn't intentional. And then when, when the government told me, okay, you can't do this, I completely changed the way in which I did my business. I completely changed the way I wrote stuff. I changed the way I said stuff. Um, I don't mention people's diagnoses and jelly juice as a cure, which is not, but I've changed the way in which I do stuff, which means that I can learn. I don't have to get a lawyer to then say, okay, you know, if someone in authority tells me you can't do this, then I won't do it. And that's the end of it, right? Some people push that, push that. They will still commit crimes. So, I mean, okay, if you're going to commit a crime, then you, then you better, you, you, hopefully you can afford the response to your crime. And it may not be very objective. The police are supposed to be objective, but they're not. Okay? Not every, but not everybody in the justice system is objective. Some of them have major connections. Some of them have their own issues. And, and then there's so many factors that make up why sentences get put out there, why only so much time a person goes to jail, and why this person goes to jail for like years and years and years, and this person gets out. Yeah, it's money. It's money. If you can't afford if you can't afford to commit the crime, don't do it. If you can't afford to be in jail, if you can't afford a lawyer to get you out, then don't do it. If you can't afford the response to your crime, because I'm telling you, it's it wasn't right. You're right, Walter. It wasn't right what that police officer did. But what caused that situation to happen to begin with was check forgery, was fraud. Okay? People are ignoring that. Yeah, the, the, the punishment, the, the conviction without due process was very excessive and it shouldn't happen. But look, this is, the, this is our society. We have people convicting each other left and right. People convict me of stuff that I never did. And I was convicted and the punishment to whatever my crimes were, were very excessive based upon on, uh, public perception and, and, and public justice. Luckily, I, you know, nothing crazy happened because I really have finally substantiated everything. But I'm telling you, you know, the public and 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 um, subjective people who already are wounded from past issues are going to respond the way they automatically respond to issues such as this. And so you almost have to say, okay, is it worth writing a forged check? Is it worth stealing someone's identity? Is it worth committing the crimes and thinking that, okay, I'll just get a slap on the wrist because you have no idea those that are looking for you, what they're going to do. And it's not right. Yes. No, it's not right. But you can't control how people respond to your crimes. You can't. And so the only way to not have to be in that situation is don't commit the crime to begin with. But that's going to get lost right now out there because he died. He died because of excessive police force. He died. This is the George Floyd guy. He died because somebody wanted to convict him before due process. And vigilanteism and all of that is a no-no in America because we have the justice system for a reason. No, it's not perfect, but we have it for a reason. Okay. And it's more perfect than not. It's better than vigilanteism. It's better than have, have, having the public convict you with absolutely no due process and no, and no um, relative objectivity. But yeah, I'll tell you what. I mean, both people, both the victim and the perpetrator, which is the, um, the police officer and George, both of them were sending off major signals. And, and maybe George was peaceful and maybe he was peaceful and he, he, he went on the ground like he was supposed to. And then they still went and, and double and triple teamed him. But it was the fear. And fear is what drives people to either have not enough punishment or excessive punishment because of their own unresolved issues. And that comes from imbalances. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm going to bring it back to Jilly Juice again because you've seen me just kind of chill out on trolling people's pages. You see me kind of stop reacting to some of the people's stuff out there that are on my Facebook page. And you see me go and react and be like, Oh my God, this person said this, this person said that. 
about, you know, remedies and this, and I'm reacting to that. And now I'm just like, I'm so over it. People are going to do what they're going to do. They have my information. I'm still going to impart my opinion or my perspective on Julie Juice and why we really shouldn't be mixing protocols because it's like putting, you know, positive and negative together and, you know, which you can do, but you have so much negative, which is like, you know, antibiotics, it's not right. And it, I mean, it's not, not that it's not right, but it's going to mess up with your chemistry, but I'm not reacting so much because I don't really care. You know, people are going to do what they're going to do. If they have the information, they do what, they do, what they're going to do and I can't stop them. And so it's like you almost, as soon as you know that you've put out all the information and then it's up to the people to figure out and it's up to the system to figure out, then you take yourself out of the war and you're not, you know, you're not in a battle. You abide by the laws of life, the laws of your land, the laws of your city, community. You, um, you, you pursue your desires that are within the confines of the law. Um, you don't impose your view onto other people that are unsolicited. Uh, what else? And people just mind their own business. And then guess what? There is no war. People following the law, following, you know, all the things, following the rules, following the laws. They take care of the, them and theirs. You know, uh, there's no issue. But it's when you cross, it's when you break the law in whatever, whatever, how minor it is, whether it's misadvertising, saying something that you can't say because of advertising, to writing a forged check. As soon as you cross that line, you have no idea how people are going to react. And I'm telling you, I'm like, how can cabbage, water, and salt create so much controversy? And holy shit, has it. I mean, it, it got... It got out to the international scene, to Interpol, that I said cabbage, water, and salt is this. And then the salt, people are so afraid of the salt. Oh, my God. Okay, so so imagine someone writing a forged check, and they happen to, 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 to be a specific culture that some people are afraid of. Holy crap. That's a whole, that's like, you know, a tinderbox waiting to explode. And with, you know, so much crime going on and so many imbalances, and cancer disease and chronic illness in the COVID and then we're being locked up and then, you know, people are, I mean, it's, it's just, it's crazy. So, so yeah, so subjective punishments rarely fit the crime and even corporal punishment, like when you spank your kid or when you punish your kid, it, it's like you almost have to figure out, does your punishment truly fit the crime of your child, of what your child is doing? And that's, the, the, that's the things of why some parents are very abusive to their kids because they have unresolved issues. And so every single time a child maybe breaks whatever laws in the house, the parent comes down like a ton of bricks and that's their own resolved is, unresolved issues. Okay. And then what they've actually done is created more of a rebelliousness in that child because they keep, because the kid, I mean, depends on the kid, you, you can break the kid, you know, and, and then they're like now so subservient that they'll take anything from anybody or you turn that kid into such a, a vigilante themselves that you've created a monster. Okay, so any type of um, overreaction to any type of violation of any rules in the house or in a community is going to create either a very subservient population that will allow people to kill them or a very rebellious population that will want to kill. Okay, and that's a pretty extreme, but that's how it is. That's that's when you deal with subjective people who are on each end of the spectrum, you know, to be so suburban where they're getting walked all over to very, very aggressive where they're the aggressor. And you've turned more victims and purpose, more victims and predators. And that's unfortunate, but that is the world that we live in. And that's why people need to get on the J juice so they can start looking at their behaviors and seeing what they're bringing into their world. What are they creating? What are they putting, you know, what, what are they doing? What the hell? <laughs> So while I do not condone what they did, what the policemen did, if that guy hadn't written that check, that forged check, they wouldn't be on the hunt for him. He would be doing whatever he's doing, minding his own business. But if he has an issue with being rightfully employed, that's a whole nother issue. And then it still comes down to imbalances in the body, mind, and spirit, as well as then people harboring counter disease and chronic illness. And then lack of, of social graces to be able to have a job and keep it. And then there's the background, how they're being raised, who they hang out with. I mean, it goes, there's so many factors. 
And so it's kind of an, it, it's, it sucks that it's, it's not as easy to say, okay, to someone who lives in the ghetto, well, I hope that you'll be able to rise above if they, if, if, if they don't have the tools in their body, mind, and spirit, if they don't have the right biochemistry to be able to combat things that cause them to do things that are not right, they're going to just keep looping in that same old behaviors, okay? And so with the J-Juice, I have seen that even in myself, some of my behaviors totally get changed and curbed, and it's, it's very different, but you won't even know to expect that until it actually happens, because it's always been what you've known to do. Whenever there is an action, there's a usual reaction that you have because it's a trigger for you. Well, eventually with J-Juice, those triggers that you have are not going to exist anymore because they've been resolved. And then you just kind of go with it. People try to mess with me. You know, the funny thing is I have people in my world that, that, mess, that mess with me because they know I'm, I'm a, you know, I mean, I could be very yuppie and very like squeamish and, and, and whatever, or I, I have this image I have to put out there and some people will purposely mess with me just to see if I react. And I don't react the way I usually react. I don't get all like, oh my God, or, you know, on certain things. Or what they've done that usually they do, like a couple years ago, I would have reacted really adversely. And this, you know, they do the same thing. And I'm just like going with it. I, I don't care. And then, the, and then I'm not reacting the way they expect. And then it's not fun for them anymore. And, and then it's done with. Okay. And then uh, Walter said, yep, off to Neverland, the grown world men and women who learn right from wrong in the world who were sworn into practice and over stuff there as all the, Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, go to sleep, Walter. <laughs> go take a nap. But yeah, I mean, so so I know that my triggers have been disappearing, okay? And um, I'm not as affected by the crazy world out there. I mean, look, I mean, I live in a relatively peaceful neighborhood, I'm glad I live in, in the area that I live in. It's not a big city. I'm glad of that because LA and Minneapolis are going nuts right now. And, you know, with the Rodney King rise back in the nineties to, you know, another repeat. Yeah. We're, we're looping in history because people have not resolved their issues. So anyways, subjective punishments really fit the crime. So that's why you have to have justice system, do what they have to do because more objective than not. And if you're going to do the crime, you better be able to afford a good lawyer so that way you don't have to do the time. And if you can't afford, if you are that poor and you can't afford a good lawyer, then you're going to have to do the time and you may have to have somebody really do some mean stuff to you, which is not right, but that's kind of the way the world works. It's primal, you know, what is it? Um, it's primal dog-eat-dog -dog world in the justice system. It really is. I mean, after you, I mean, not so much the justice system, but when you get into jail, it's dog eat dog world. And it's a whole different society in jail. Not that I've ever been to an adult jail, but I would say that watching a lot of these prison shows, holy crap, I, I wouldn't survive. So I make sure I don't freaking break the law, you know, to warrant me going to jail. And uh, most people, actually all people in my world will not ever break the law in that way to be able to, to just say, I mean, some people do, but not because they're criminals, because, you know, drinking problems or whatever. But if you don't want to go to jail, don't break the law. If you don't want to get beat up by, by law enforcement who, who may happen to have a bone to pick with whoever, because you don't know who you're going to get when they arrest you, don't break the law. You can't assume that they're going to treat you nice. So anyways, all right, have a good day. Bye.